PS4. Ah, thank you. Needs to be reminded. Okay. Um, how does this, uh, Yavni Shalom Yavni? Excited, I will say hello to everybody. Yavni, hello. Yavni, show yourself. Yavni. Okay, he will show himself. Okay. When you look to this Gomorrah, um, and I want to get to the, I want to get to um, the post game as soon as we can. If we start, if I do a lot of Gomorrah, we'll get stuck there because it's great stuff, but we'll get stuck there. Um, but I want to ask you about the Gomorrah. I want to ask you how did it read or what did it read like? I don't have, or how did it sound? It was just like regular stuff. Or is there anything else, uh, anything else, anything else to it? Um, and what kind of discourse was it, or is it, I should say, as it's as it's there? Okay, and I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it at that. What do you have, you have any? Sorry, was that? Okay, who? You have any? Were you about to speak? Oh yeah, is am I audible now? Uh, now. Okay. Um, uh, I, in terms of like the experience of reading the Gemara, yeah. it was like it was I'll a lot of that. it was a I'll lot of different that. things, and a lot of them were very. Uh, a lot of them were like troubling in different and in different ways. Some of it felt like yeah. Yeah. So every yeah, every troubling, line was... but evidently troubling in like bad ways because the word trouble. Uh yeah. I mean uncomfortable ways. Like uncomfortable. Every, yeah. yeah. Every few lines felt like a different sort of assault on my sensibilities. <laughs> yeah. I found that a great benefit in choosing the school I knew this would Okay, you know, I, okay, but anybody else? Or I, anybody? I, I, I felt the same way. I felt, I felt a lot of comfort in the book I read a few years ago by Rav Eliezer Berkowitz, Jewish Women in Time in Torah, to help me um, come to terms with the, the discomfort of uh, a lot of what we were preparing. Well, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and books like that, I mean, I was a student, I'm a student of Professor Berkowitz was you really find time, but you know the books uh, that I you know, will show some of the problems and then smooth them over, you know, give you a yeah. meta theory or whatever, and so, so that it's you know it's the best form of apologetics. I think a lot of ways, still <laughs> apologetics. Um, hi Isaac, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I, 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 I did find right interest. Now. What, what I did from anybody. John, we get something from you. What? Yeah, I just, I actually, I mentioned this to Sarah when we were learning together. But I, I feel like the um, the Gemara and Shabbos was talking about rings when it says Nashim uh, Ambifne Atzman Hena or something like that. I don't remember the exact quote from the Gemara there in Shabbos. Like that feels like this entire su set of sugyot is like that. It's like there's this category of people called women. We have to marry them. It's very confusing. Like there's some requirements that we have to do prior via. They're needed for that. They're needed as Ezer Kenegdo. But we like really don't know what to make of them, you know. Like they're they're like a separate what? in some ways. Yeah, I even I don't even understand why you're giving them such prominence, women. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the Gamora's give. I mean, we'll see things, but I don't not sure. You know, at first view, if the Gamora is giving them that much prominence, right? Even for me, uh, you know, it's a male. I'm a sensitive man. Even for me. Um, it's um, it's clearly you know directed towards men. It's clearly directed towards me, and you know that's what that's 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 what's there. Okay, um, anything more along this line or something different? What do you have, Ruben? I can't hear you. 
Yeah, sorry, just want to add to what Joel is saying, specifically in Simon, in, uh, in Simon 4, it feels like the Shulchan Aruch and even the Torah to a certain extent are trying to create like different sociological groups, different groups like within Judaism, where you have the perfect, like the most kosher and then underneath you have different subgroups. And I thought that was really interesting because it creates some kind of like eugenics within society where the way you're born, you're born or like the way your parents had sex really influenced your place within society. So I thought it was really interesting. Okay. Um, okay. This is helpful. Anybody else? Anything to add? Just one, so this would, one thing I noticed. Yes, yeah, yeah, Sarah. Does somebody else want to say something first? No? I was going, Sarah. Okay. I, I just was interested in like the, the different psukim they're using as proof, proof texts and the seemingly like really wide range of sources that they are drawing on. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like I was disturbed by all the kind of obvious disturbing things too, but. Okay. So, um, okay, this is, uh, so let me, uh, let me say, um, this is a time uh, for me in my, in, one part of my previous life to say, no problem, give me all the problems and we'll have a very good type, <laughs> a very good answer at the end. Okay, that's, okay. That, that's not exactly what I plan to do. No, I don't think it's what nothing plan, plans to do, nor are we, well, we're all here learning and we based on, and that in here for acceptance or rejection. And you know, like, like the rest of you, I wanna see what's here, but I want to see um, what are the concerns? Um, what are the concerns here in Gomorra? And I'm just going to spend only a few minutes on that. What are the concerns in Gomorrah? Then I want to see what are the concerns in the uh, post scheme and whether or not these concerns change at all or added to whatever term can be used. What are, you know, what are concerns there? And, uh, how do, you know, how's it worked through? And in the meantime, in terms of our own reflection, what I'm, uh, what I'm interested in, um, in our own reflection, is where are there pieces? We're all, we're all halachic thinkers here, okay? So where are there pieces and interesting things that, uh, we should also remember. In other words, that might you know might be helpful, helpful recreation, re reassimilation of the material. Looking at it, very interesting. That that might be my concern. My I'm asking it for it to be also your concern, and I'm I'm attempting to do that without being apologetic or falsely saying that I'm not being, a, I have some apologetic thing in me. I've been a rabbi for a hell of a long time. I've been, you know, rabbi of a congregation. I do weddings, you know, et cetera. But, but you know, I, I have some of that, but I'm gonna to try to, you know, leave that as much as I actually like to go to a better level. But I'm actually asking that from you as well, because maybe we'll come up with something in the course, in the course of this year. And therefore, so let me say it one more time better. If one is working as part of the halachic system, if we're going to rewrite the Gemara, uh, write the new Gemara, Gesunter Hay, Tabrach, and everyone's had, that's, that's not what I'm going to I may be helpful to you for that, but that's not what I'm going to do. What I'm looking for are what are the things that can be useful, both in terms of uh, paradigms, things, processes that halacha uses that may. Uh, May inform, may inform future processes. And, you know, those kind of ideas that might be minor themes, but could very well be brought in as many. You, you catch what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you know, use a different language, not just the chumras, but the kulas, not just the kulas, but the chumras which would, would show certain interesting look at, uh, look at aspects. And all that. So that's where I that's where I want to go, and I want to start going there today. So let's just go there today for a minute. Uh, um, Joel, you're leaving in 15 minutes. Is he still here? Yeah. If it, Joel's leaving in 15 minutes. 
because he's got prior engagement. Uh, say 10 seconds about Wednesday. Is Wednesday it's actually, we're, we're switching to Thursday, Thursday from 2 to 2.45. Okay. Um, I'll send out a link later this week. We're going to do every week a Hazara Shear, even though I'm only only able to be at half, first half an hour, I'm going to watch the videos to know where we got. And uh, we're going to, for that 45 minutes, um, we're just going to review what we did and also maybe cover it in some places that we missed in, you know, like if there was a C from the Shulchan Aruch we didn't do, uh, we may do that. And also um, sometimes what I'll do, and Yavni can tell you more about it. He's been to a lot of them in Asher as well, um, is uh, sometimes I'll bring the Arocha Shulchan if it's available uh, as like a supplement as well. Um, so Chazar Shir Thursdays, two to two forty-five. That's Eastern time. So add was it yeah. seven hours if you're in Israel, um, or take away three if you're Alana Mantel who lives on the better coast. So uh, I'm from the west coast. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right. So so I ask you now. Thank you. Okay. That's what I want. And you know, Chazar Shir is always better than the regular Shir, right? Yes. The difference is you want to be loved. That's what a chazor, whoever gets a chazor share wants. I'm just telling you, and the person gets a regular share, we reach this age, had enough. What's, what has love got to do with it? To quote a, a great Python, neat. Um, okay, so uh, let's take a look. Uh, starting on Samach Aleph, we'll do this, uh, do this just for a few minutes. What are some of the sections that seem to be Intriguing or deplorable, it doesn't matter. I don't, but you don't have to do it on some of the if you can do it on some of the bet. Here, I'll start. What's the first one you have? Anybody have something on some of the house? And I can't tell. Yeah. Just the, 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 go first, ahead, the, the first question is, is the whole basis for having a wife? Or, no, it, well, no, I, just, I think I saw that elsewhere. I think. The, the question is, what constitutes fulfilling the mitzvah of Fruvu? What constitutes a mitzvah? And, how how and, much? And, 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 and how many kids? And what I found interesting in the two schools of thought that the Mishnah brings is that one of them brought a more um, Israelite focused answer, whereas the other was a more universal answer. Okay. Uh, uh, say that again. What's the more universal? Speak to me. What's the universal? Okay, the the universal, and this is the the, the, okay, the more universal, universal was the one that was the one that's based on um, Zachar and the Keva the Rautam. Okay. Fine. Whereas the more Judeo focused or Israelite focused one was Moshe's had Moshe's two sons. Moshe's two sons, very focused. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. Anybody else in San Michael? Thank you. This is helpful. What do you have, Joel? Just, I mean, Beit Shammai's basis of using Moshe. Moshe's children, as far as we can tell, don't don't turn out very well, right? It's like a shocking piece to to say, like these are the the paradigm is Moshe, whose children, as far as we know, at least you know, like become idolaters seemingly uh, at some point. You know, it, it's. I don't know if he he's the model we want to be as a parent, and he you know he had, because of his role he has to leave his children essentially. So, so this is and your our Torah yeah. and a family in trouble. Okay, exactly. Yeah, and his wife. And yeah, Sarah, what are you going to say? Yeah, just I mean, Joel and I talked about this a little together, but and I think Joel, this is really Joel's point, but um, Moshe also like is not a model for staying like close to your wife. Like he also leaves his wife for a long time, so like it seems it's just a strange, strange proof. But isn't it? Uh, isn't that exactly why it's useful? Why he's useful as a figure? Because other because he's done. Like, oh, interesting. The point is that done. he does desist, and the question is when are you allowed to desist? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's helpful. Leave it, yeah. Also, also the focus isn't on what kind of a parent somebody is. The focus is on fulfilling the mitzvah of pru or vu. Okay. It's all about pru or vu. Right. If it was what kind of parent all we are, right. then we, we don't have any got, paradigms in the, in the Torah. Family is there. You got your breakout groups on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. But, you know, there's very little here about uh, family paradigms, Rabbi Joel. I mean, it's just, you know, it's not really here. I mean, it's not here. It's pru or vu. And let me cheat with you. On the top of Samach Aleph on the Bet, but I didn't, you know, I tell you, it's down at the bottom, you know, four or five lines in it. 
Um, they get they bring a pasuk uh, pasuk from uh, I can't remember where it's from, yeah, from Hosea Dalit, and uh, it says uh, within it he's new below ye frotsu. Anyway, the way they do the drasha, call bia she'ain ba pirsa, any bia that doesn't have ufaratsa expansion. In other words, not doesn't have a kid. Eina ella bi'ilatz nut. Okay, it's, it's only a bila, you know, it's only a bila. So bring that into the conversation that you're going to have about Judaism's view on healthy sexuality. It's you know, all the way through here, it's the through or you know, and that's a, a more radical form of it. Then we have, okay, so we kind of talked about Samach Aleph on the Aleph. Anybody have anything? I got, I wrote on my own list. Anybody have anything on Samach Bet on the Aleph? Just something that came up from the beginning is yeah. this tension of Pruvu and Talmud Torah. And it comes ah. straight from... Where is that? I guess, Give me a quote. Give a quote. From the, uh, from the beginning with, the, with selling a separate Torah in order to, in order to marry, um, even having Moshe as the, um, as the model. Uh, so what is Torah? I got my own note here. So what is Torah? In the, the Torah comes in and out of the discussion for the next uh, four uh, pages. So what is Torah? Torah is the other woman. Competition. It's the other Torah, woman. Right. Exactly. We the have other, the, there's, there's a thing with uh, Matsaisha like Matsatov, right? Yeah. Matsaisha yeah. Matsatov, and it might mean a real woman and it might mean Torah. Right? Right. They're both kind of of competing, uh, um, yeah, things that you you want to find in your life, right? And we'll see this right. Then there's the example of Elazar Ben Azaria, right? Because he just all he wants is Torah. Ben Azai, they're ben like, Azai. okay, that's fine. Oh, sorry, my bad. Right. They're like, okay, it's good enough for you, you know. Like, so he does have the other woman. Um, and then there are also all those, um, th this wasn't in the, the text that we learned for today, but uh, there are a number of places where they talk about Torah as being like your fiance and you can't teach it to Goyim because if you do, it's like you let the Goyim sleep with your wife and like all this stuff. And so I think there is, it, it, this is part of like a larger theme of this tension between like, which do we love more, our wives or Torah? Which is okay. It's the competition. It's competition for time. Although I will say, I, I just think you can have a polyamorous relationship with them both. I don't know. Well, okay. So could be, could be. No, no, no. They luck. I mean, they're constantly coming to try to find resolutions to it. In other words, the the model of Ben Azza is almost the the seems to be the exception that proves the rule. And then it becomes a question for us, is Ben Azai a model that could be, you know, can be duplicated for us, us the reader, can be duplicated. What is the more saying about it? But, but, but Puru is there, the Torah is the uh, other woman, but maybe you can find a resolution. They talk about the resolution. Do you learn first? You know that? They talk about that competition for time, which drives everyone from looking around here, your generation's crazy about how do you, you know, raise a kid and still, uh, and still do the other things that you want to do. It's just uh, an enormous, it's an enormous question. But uh, that's not meant as a resolution, what I'm saying right here. I'm talking about the concerns that are there. Torah seems to take all the time and being, having a woman, because it's a document directed to men having a woman which should be a wife and nothing else should be should be should have should also take up enormous amount of time can you do both that's one of the questions I say all the time do you have the power do you have the means do you have the money to be able to learn and at the same time same time do this so these are these are concerns you know this is like you know this is this is for, it's almost like these are, these are facts, like everything else is like, how do you, 
how do you uh, put it together? There's nothing here, though, in this section of Saint Fet, there's nothing here about the relationship with the Torah per se. Right? You look, you quoted Isaac Other Gomorrah. There's nothing here about uh, relationship, man and woman. I mean, there, you know, there's pru or boo, and there's a couple of other things which actually are important. I shouldn't have said that. There are some things that are that are thrown in, which uh, which become important. Okay. All right. Okay. What are the other obsessions? Now, uh, I don't care if you're trouble or not, but what are the other concerns of the Alana Gemara? had something she put in the chat. Go ahead. Read Alana for us. Oh, well, I was saying, it seems like they're, they seem to separate the mitzvah of marriage and the mitzvah of pru or vu. And they're not saying you should be married in order for pru or vu, although that's obviously part of what marriage is. But they seem just just from the Mishnah and then on 61, they're saying, they're listing them as two separate things. Um, so I could come up with many questions about that. Like to what extent are, is, to what extent is uh, their value and just having a marriage itself, you know, what should that marriage look like? To what extent are they, are these two categories overlapping and to what extent can they be separate categories? I think there could be, I don't think the Gemara necessarily goes there, but I could go there. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll, right now we'll see how far the Gemara goes. Go. Actually, on that Where, note, where's, where's the section that talks about how you're supposed to? to uh, there are sections there that uh, that certainly the Gemara feels that it's a positive value of the man to the woman. Right? The whole section is if you're not if you're not married, you don't you don't have. Shalom, and that's what you, you don't have Tova, you don't have, you don't have Choma, you don't have Choma. I thought that there was an interesting difference, the way, though. The, the source, if you look at the Pasuk, the source of, 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 of uh, revolving, the woman revolving around the man under the Chopa comes from the Choma idea. That's a Choma, that's, that's actually the source of it. You may want to look at it sometime. I interrupted somebody. Sorry, Rabbi Lanza, I was also, one thing I'd been thinking also when I was going over the sources, and again, now when Ilana was saying that, there's an interesting difference between, in this section, when it's talking about the, the value of having a wife, there's a very interesting difference in what the, what the Rebbeim of Bavel said, as opposed to what the Rebbeim of Eretz Yisrael said. Okay. One, one yeah. was talking about the, the you know, in, in Bavel, they're saying, a man that doesn't have a wife is without bracha, he's without tova, he's without, um, what was the other? There was one other thing. Simcha brachan tova. Whereas in Eretz Yisrael, it was more talking about not his own happiness or his own benefit, but his own protection, how he's not complete without her, without the wall to protect him, without the, um, without the peace, you know, surrounding him. It seemed a much more... I don't want to say egalitarian because it doesn't go nearly that far, but much more thinking about the woman as a partner as opposed to just a means to an end. All right. What did you feel? Thank you. I, I just, uh, I, I want to, uh, this is helpful. Uh, I, I'm not going to make a comment on that. That's helpful because we're just making a list. How did you see this part in which uh, Abraham and Yitzchak, Sarah at least, are all, um, are all sterile. It's interesting, no? Do you have any reaction to that? Okay, I'll leave it at that. We'll we'll, we'll come back to that because it won't be they won't be they won't be left alone. Um, and so you know you immediately have a crisis with the with the, those who are the propagators of the faith that the whole faith is based on. Seems a little seemingly, at least in these sections, on pru or vu, and you know they can't uh, they can't have it done. What, okay, what's about other obsessions here? What's the how other many, real concerns? What do you, yes, Isaac? Uh, how many kids, and what are the sexes of the children? Yeah, right, um, right. So how do you fulfill? In a sense, the she or giving the share of how to do it's no different than each year, the share of matzah and all the rest. But what's the direction? There's a lot of machokas. What's the direction of the Gemara, though? I'm not sure what you mean when you say the direction of the Gemara. Uh, what, um, 
if you had a kind of sum up the answer. Um, I feel like if I was going to sum up the answer, I would say you always have to have at least one son. Um, yeah, one son seems to be the bottom line. And what's next to the bottom line? What are the other ideas that are out there? Uh, other possibilities are a son and a daughter, two sons and two sons and two daughters. Um, and then this also ties into the question of whether or not Garing, who have children from like pre Geru, are considered to have fulfilled the mitzvah of Pururu and what happens to that family tie. I mean, that's probably incidental to what we're looking at. But right? forget about, yeah, right. But, uh, but wait, no, it's not incidental. I mean, in, in terms of my interest of things to sure. hold on to, this is a whole section, I mean, that, that talks about, I mean, that even though we say, what's the principle that, uh, that negates that, right? You know, Gershon, you know, Gershon Iskaya, right? So there's no connection that radical, the radical disconnect of a Ger with his former, with his former life. This Gemara seems to say not necessarily a radical disconnect in all ways, which is uh, right. Mm -hmm. Many Gerim are told that uh, your father is not your father, your mother is not your mother. And, you know, that seems to be part of the logic of what takes place, but no, it's not there. So anyway, I don't think it's, I think it's actually an important piece. Um, anything different, anything else that we're, that we're missing? And I say as we do it, we're doing it, I, we're not doing it deep enough, but it's okay. What else is there? Yeah, uh, along the lines of what you were, what you were just getting to is, is like okay. the, this question in asking about like what counts as having kids, there's like a question, questions more fundamentally about like what about like categories of people and how they can and can't be related and how they can and like to what extent they're they're human in a way right because the question about the slave is it just like an, an animal which was pretty hard to read and then there's the and like through all this of course is the the total uh, ignoring of women as a category that can be subjects in the sentences instead of just it's totally ignoring women why women are mentional as ignoring things that women can, as, as things that could be subjects in the sentences as opposed oh, to subjects. like incidental oh, or subjects. like objects. Okay, well, yeah. I think we're going to see some things uh, on that. And... Okay, so I want to leave that part as a question. Is there, will, the, will there be stuff, will it be, will it be addressed in the post scheme or not? Not necessarily your language, but will it be, uh, be, a, be, a, be addressed? Um, yeah, the, uh, this, uh, and now I'll try something about the Evid just as an apologetic, you know, kind of answer. But uh, I don't think uh, they like the concept of, of a slave. In other words, I think it's part of the move, the move against. And so it's not a, it's, um, you know, it's a social category, right? And it's a it's economic category. And basically, it says uh, it was one of the possible my response is saying that it's an awful category. Even in the story in the Gomorrah, they 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 forced the rabbi, the owner, excuse me, to free her. Why? Why did they force the free her? We have that. It's in Samachai, or is it the end of Samachai? Why did they force her? Because people weren't treating her right. Because it's a very bad, by definition, when you're, there's no good definition of being a slave. If you're Chetzi, this is the case of Chetzi, I mean, sorry, I'm going to the latter one. Chetzi ben Chorin, the Chetzi Shitva. There's no good, there's no good way of being in, being even in that intermediate uh, connection. So I'm saying that's what their interest. I, I, I'm not gonna be defensive anymore about being defensive. I think it's another way, you know, another way of looking. Okay, I'm going to about moving somewhere else. Anybody else have last time? Sarah, what do you got? Oh, I just had actually a point on the Evid thing that it, I, I was struck that they come down differently on the Evid and the Ger, and that yeah. they're in a certain way more chamur on the Evid, which like I was sort of confused by. Um, and it, it, if you go the route you were just suggesting and saying, well, what, what they're worried about is like, that they don't like this category at all. 
then it seems like when you're free, you should be freed. And like, you should return to the status you had before. Not, you've been freed and everything that happened to you before like doesn't count in some way. Well, this um, is clearly an epigenomic. This is clearly an epigenomic. Right, and but then it's a lousy so status. If it's Evid Knani and the only problem, and then you're saying, well, the problem is the children aren't Jewish at all, essentially, right? Like the Gare's children aren't Jewish either, at least in the Sugya, before we get to the post game break. Yeah. Um, assume right. that the kids are No, Gare has a life, right? So it says, is, I'll say so then, like, the Gare. They're oh, both non Jewish children. Yeah. I mean, the, the Gare. The Gare. I, I, the Gare no, go ahead. The Gare had a life before uh, conversion. Uh, often when we say Gare Shinsky or Kakat and Shinola Dame, we're saying is he had no, he or she had no life before. This piece of Gomorrah gives us the a basis of saying a Gare for sure had a life before. And there's a connection and it retains a connection to it. If you have a section that's called Purubu and this whole major topic here. And to say that they're already Yotze Fru or Vu, and it's part of Yeshu Olam, this, this non-Jew having, having non-Jewish children, I think that's a very positive statement. I think that's a very positive statement. That, and that's basically how they're, how they're possibly there. And then when it says that the Gare, once the Gare converts, it converts, nonetheless, his children, and if the Machokas will stay in the in the post game, uh, does the, the children have to convert in order to be considered or not have to convert? But the, the plain sense of the Gemara is they don't have to convert in order for him to be Yotze on that, which means they're still, he still has a connection to them. They have a connection, they have a connection to him. I think it's a fruitful, to me, this is a good example of what I was looking for. This is a fruitful area of paying, of paying concern. If I want to have, well, let's, let's say, if I want to write, a halachic article, if I want to have a synagogue in a community that is actually a traditional religious community and have them come up with a way of understanding how do we function with this, these members who bring their parents to the wedding of the grandchildren, etc. This is the beginning of a, of a conversation of the connection and dignity of these uh, non-Jewish individuals. And they're not just strangers. I did a big wedding, big social wedding here in Jerusalem. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, the chassan was a convert and the, uh, it was a gear and a good conversion. And uh, I'm sorry for even adding that, but nonetheless, a good conversion and the, uh, and the and the uh, grandfather of the whole family and a major player in Jerusalem, a lot of major players, but a major player says, Rabbi, this is all great. I'm happy with what you do. Please ask these uh, the parents of uh, of the chassan. Please ask them to leave. Okay, so I didn't ask them to leave. I spoke to him and I explained to him everything. And I lost one of the biggest donations I ever had for my organization. But, you know, I mean, he just, he just couldn't see it. So, you know, there's an education that goes with this. Okay, I've said enough on this. And now, where are we? We are, we're going to start. This is okay. Any last comments? We did right now start chewing up the material. Do we do a perfect uh, chewing up? Fine. Should I list another 10, 20 uh, partial ideas? It's enough already. Let's take a look at, uh, yes, we have, sir. Again, I just excellent. want to add one more. I, I, sure. My audio cut out for a second, so it's possible I missed, somebody said Go this ahead. and I missed it, but I just want to like flag the, the whole discussion of being with a woman for 10 years and not having children and then okay. being potentially five to divorce her. Which seems worth thinking. Uh, yeah, through. yeah, absolutely. That's what. That's what. We'll, we'll see how. So that's uh, that's there. Um, but make the case for it, please, before we move on. Make the case for why we should think about it. No, make the case why it's a good. Why 
why the why we, makes why sense. he should be a chayav to mm-hmm. divorce her. Yeah. I mean, if you think it's a mitzvah deraita, and you think well, that it's, basically it's clearly a mitzvah deraita. Right. Lose, so, right. like, I don't know. Not you can't put yourself case. in a situation where you can't possibly do this mitzvah deraita. You've got to get yourself out of that situation. We ha- we set some standard where we say like this is good enough evidence that this person, this woman can't have children, you gotta find, you gotta like find another way. Then you have all kinds of like contemporary questions about like, okay, no, no, uh, kind of in both directions good. about like what, what constitutes good evidence of that in, in other circumstances, whatever. All right. But uh, the way the Gomorrah basically has it just to respond to one point, you know, I just wanted you to make the case for it, but you, I, I couldn't fully stand that. So, <laughs> so you said the other part. I understand that, but but uh, but yeah, the other Gemara says she's mutter to uh, marry other people. She's not considered to be necessarily an akara. Uh, she just loves zocha lehiba not mimen and mimen no. The thing goes back in different different forms, but you know that this this doesn't work between the two between the two of them. Now, this is a big issue. I'm not taking away the big issue. But by the way, as I put a plug for what I want to say is we always have to make the case for it at the same time. It fits in to a Peru or strongly based aspect here. Uh, I mean, it's, drive here. I just wonder whether, like, if you're really on the strong Peru or drive train, you shouldn't let her marry anybody. Or she should only let her marry as a king or something. No, or so right, already how, do you know it, how do you know she's sorry the to uh, say so. they're more compassionate than you are? In other words, when you when you will be converted to this idea that Peru is exactly correct, you will be a tyrant. So I, think, I think the Sugi is there is also discussing the possible concept of male factor um, infertility. Right. Because yeah. the woman, the woman is to be to be believed about what she experiences in intimate moments, and they can't take that away. You get, you know, the the, the law is shomimla. You have to listen to her. She 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 can then take the ketuva in the case of divorce, including the tosefet. So there's definitely a case for believing that women have definite uh, uh, definite authority, not authority, but they are to be believed in the case of a man who, who may not yeah. be functioning the way he should be functioning. So there is, and this, I was also surprised by the idea that in the event of Eses Shanim Shulavru or something like that, um, the woman also has a slight amount of chiyuv because it's not the same chiyuv, but it's it's because of her ziknut. So as she gets older, she's only, there's a slight obligation there. And I was surprised by no, this. No, 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 no. Abla, not abla, you, you, no, no, the, the word obligation is bothering me. What do you mean by no, All right, fair enough. It's not the same. I can't call it a chiyuv, but the rabbis seem to seem to suggest that she, she has, an, has entitlement. an entitlement, and it's a good idea for her to have someone to taina. look after she her in her frail dotage. Taina. Her taina, is, what's her taina? Her taina is, I'm going to be, because it could very well be that I'm not the problem, that he's the problem, yeah, yeah. and now I'm going to be left He's got family. He's got money. Okay, I can have the ketuba. It's going to run out. Best thing for the future, for my future, is to have my children nearby. I live near my mother. She's 101. It's worth a lot of money. No, no, I mean, these things are serious. These things are serious things. I walk across town, you know, almost every day to go see her. So, and you think anybody says you're a wonderful person, Rabbi Landis? No. <laughs> but you, you get my point. The point is, so this is good. So I think I think we're in a good place for this. A lot of the, I will say, a lot of the things that that uh, that alert us. I don't want to say the things that bother us, bother bother the rabbis. I just want to say the following: the same. We didn't. We're not the first ones to learn it. And the rabbis themselves now have to learn. And not only do they have to learn it, they have to paskin in such cases. And paskin gets very difficult in the in this situation. One last point on this: there's a mutuality here about uh, the ten years. Sometimes he wants to get rid of her because he wants to have kids, and sometimes 
she wants to get rid of him because she knows that it's his fault because he doesn't shoot his semen like an arrow. And she knows that. And she knows it's his problem. And if he still keeps, I mean, that's just the Gemara, it's just a shot of the Gemara. And he knows that, uh, she knows that if he keeps with her, that she's gonna be too old. She won't have anybody. She won't be able to bear children. And where goes her, where, what's her pension for the future? So, so, saying, so have, yeah. The Torah is pretty clear that this is not, she can't use that as a ground for divorce. Like since she doesn't have a chiyuf of period of Yerivya, even after 10 years, she can't say, I want to therefore I want divorce. Where, well, I, I'm not agreeing with you. We'll see, we'll see where this goes. But I hear you. But the, I'll, we'll see where this uh, goes. The Gemara also talks about a taina, that she has a taina. A taina is a very strong thing. So let's let's go to that. So now, let's uh, before we're going to take a break, we have 15 minutes. Let's look at, uh, let's go to the tour. Okay, you got the tour? Let's go there. Let's take our time here on the tour. Okay. In fact, we don't have much time. So I'm going to read through the first part of uh, Aleph in the, in the tour. Right. By the way, every time I come to a word that's been used before, okay, in the psukim, in the Gemara, somebody say ping. Anybody say ping? Okay. Volcano solo azer connecto. Ping. Volki cabinet of Ria Badan Kade, we throat to our boat. Ping, ping, ping. Vise Evshar below her azer. Okay, ping. Volcano to go with the bake. Ping. Although that's not even actually in the Gomorrah. That's add. That's added on. So my point to you is that's an added nuance. I, it's, it's in the Torah, fine. Just saying it's not in the Gemara that we look right now. Well, the Vek. And the Vek is a powerful value, emotionally laden term. Okay. Okay. We had that in the Gemara. Dechsev shofek dama adam v'samechay v'atem pruervu ukeilu. And by the way, most of the places they throw in the word keilu because they don't want it to be. It's a legal document. They don't want to say the person really is a murderer. But it's keilu, as if you're murdering. Ukeilu mame tadamut dechtev kibetzam alhim barat adam. Right, we had that pasuk too. Ping. Because we need numbers. It's a claim in the Gemara. You need numbers in order for the Shekhinah to be present. How much is the number? 2,000 and what? Yeah, they usually remember the numbers. What? I remember what numbers? How it was, many? It was 22,000. 2,000 and, and 210. 2,200. No, 22,000. Shari below Tova, below Bracha, ping, 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 below Dira, below Dira. That's a new one. Below Torah, below Choma, below Sh By the way, why does it say below Dira? Basically, the post can say, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know how that came in there. That came in there somehow. Below Choma, below Shalom. Bama Rebbe Lazar, call me She'en Lo Isha. Eino Adam, he's not, he's nisht a mensch. The Kavich, and by the way, that's there, and no one said this, said this in a positive way before, but that is in the Gemara. Because that was on a page you told us to skip. Kavich, Nasi Isha, Avono Tav, Mit Akakim, his Avono Stop, you know, like a Pekat. Shneimar Matzi Isha Matzi Tov. Gemar talks about this. The Yafet Ratzon May Hashem. So that's our that's our first uh, that's our first part. What kind of what kind of what what kind of deal 
is this first section? Aleph. Words of encouragement. <laughs> yeah, words of encouragement. That's is not how I would have Is it a carrot or a stick? Is it, is it saying, men, we know you don't really want to get married, so we need to terrify you and force you into it? Or is it saying, men, all, the, all these wonderful things will come to you? You're hitting people with a carrot. Like, <laughs> That's the Jewish way. way. And then right. tripping them with a the stick. We always are hitting people with a carrot, right. Okay, a carrot huggle, maybe, but the uh, carrot, uh, carrot nonetheless. Yavi, you had a problem with what I said? Uh, with what you know. Uh, so actually, but, the uh, um, the Bach has uh, has this problem. Um, look at the Bach. Equal made that. Is Barach Shemosh of Shmuel, etc. Equal made that for Ezer Tzorach Hidim Hashavah Haraz. Why do we need this? That he writes at the beginning. This chibor. What does it got to do with what we were talking about? Just give the halacha. Give the psak halacha. The haba on the hot hill just to begin. Chayev Adam, we saw Isha. The person is Chayev. By the way, how does the Shulchanar begin? Take a look. Shukhanar, Aleph, Aleph, Aleph. Evan Hazer. All right. I had to find it myself. Where is this? Chayav Koli Adam Lisa. Excuse me, say it again. Chayav Koli Adam Lisa Isha. Okay, right. That's how a proper halacha. So I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't know if the criticism created the Shukhanar or the Shukhanar created the criticism. Got to think about that. But I think that, you know, that's good. They're those guys. That, you know, that have confused minds. Since this is all for my benefit, this, uh, this, this helped mate. I don't need this tova. If it's all for my benefit, maybe I just don't need it. The Evshi Ba. I don't want this. Somehow he'll get himself uh, there was a movie about this uh, uh, Scarlett Joh Johansson did a movie about uh, being this guy's she's a voice on a computer right and you didn't see that movie all right neither did I but I saw her Umam Silo Azer Bara through some mechanism uh, the rabbi Achla, I shared Nafsho Kishura Ben Nafsho. Falkein Lahotzi Taud Zem Min Halei. It's a big mistake. Amr Yifach Shemel Al Shalkosh Baruch Hu Sheida Shein Tov. It's not Wait, good to be Levado and to have a fake, uh, a fake partner. What, what do you think it means? Rooted. What do you think this means? These words, Mamsilo uh, Ezer. He will create his own Azer. Amsilo Azer et et asher nafsho kushurab and nafsho. His soul is very he's very close to another man. He has a relationship with another man. That's what I'm saying later on. Ki huye paracha yodea masha huha azer. But here it says that God knows better. Lo to masha bet libo shal adam atoe bedato lamsilo azer lurts on no. Bilvad, 
הוא היה צריך לעשות אותו בצורת אישה, הוא היה לעשות אותו בצורת איש כמו. I don't think this is intentionally an anti-gay statement, although it can come out that way. I, just, I, just, I think that. But in other words, why should I have a woman? Why should we? No, this is a, according to this. Ella about parches of having to you to let the masha bara adam, sachor nukebek roshimam adam, ukaroshimam adam. I'd like to put that, I need a sound for that for every time I find something which actually is something positive to remember and, and is useful, right? The Bach says they're both called Adam, that's what it says, or they're called together, together their name, I don't think it's their names necessarily, or their name is called, let me say name, Adam, Uh, and the other way you might take it is I'll do Purubu, but I'll do without Nisuin, which is a bond which shows that has responsibilities, right? That's not. In other words, he's being very clear here. There has to be some picture of why, you know, the halacha won't, be, won't suffice on its own. And even that possible, oh, totally, oh, Adam. Which means a man should be tov can lead to a totally egocentric and a person not wanting to have anything different. And the person would just, the man would create somebody in his own image or treat the woman with zanut, and derch zanut. And uh, that's why the uh, Bach says that's why Yosef. I'm sorry, that's why the tour here, excuse me. That's why the tour here is giving this whole thing, not just, he's trying to create a picture. He's trying to create a society or you know, the need for what kind of society this, uh, this will be because he doesn't trust the human, the egocentric drive of the human being on, on, his, on his own, still talking about men, on his, on his own. So it's basically, creating, uh, it's basically creating a societal structure based on sexual behaviors. That's what he's doing. Like basically, you're only like making mid up period very you know, You're only doing things properly if you're doing within a certain structure, which is marriage. That's like you could only you could only have the good of what God intended for you to be good. So lot of Adam and period only within the context of marriage. That's what he seems to be saying. Okay, thank you for that. No, I mean, I'm listening to comments, people. Anyway, that's the explanation of the argument presented at the beginning of the tour. Whether one agrees with the argument, whether one finds it, finds it, finds it convincing or not, okay. That could be, is the, tour, is the Bach right about the tour? I think the Bach's right about the tour, that that's the tour's purpose. I mean, he does it in his own words, in his own way, but why did the tour need to, uh, need to do this? So therefore, the other way of saying it is that the, the Bach is telling us that there's a context for the mitzvah. There's a, and it's a larger context. Part of it is Loto, Loto Domo Vado, but that's only part of the, that's part of the, that's part of the context. Can I, can I add something? Please. I, th I think he's saying a very interesting point, which is that the, 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 the pur vu is, is, uh, requires that he says the dav kabo. In other words, you need to be a parental pair to do this mitzvah. You need to be, you can't just be, he says like animals who are just like have a random group of men and women and there's children being produced. There needs to be a relationship 
with a, a man and between a man and a woman, and there and then for children to come from that in order for you to do the mitzvah. He's expand. He's sort of, a, or I don't know how you want to say. He's he's redefining, I would say, almost the definition of purvu. It's not simply having children. He's redefining yeah. it from being a mitzvah to being what? No, it's still a mitzvah. But the mitzvah right. is not simply having children. It's having children in a certain context, in, in a cooperative environment where there is an actual pair of parents working together. That, we, that's what well, he said. Uh, 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 okay, so therefore, I don't know if I thought... I'm just saying, it's a, it's a good argument. I don't know if I fully agree. When I say good argument, I just mean, for me, it's a good argument. But I don't, again, but I don't know if I, I fully agree. But yes, it creates it creates a context and argument. What he's basically saying is the reaction we had to, to having something that seemed to be pro or vu driven alone, you know, that, that's the only thing, it's not sufficient for the art, it's not sufficient for the chiv of Uru itself. There has to be something more. So he gives all this stuff, which is to to create where this where where this goes, and that's so, how he explains the. That's how he explains the. Uh, that's how he explains the tour. Now the tour is an educational is a is a book of law and it's also an educational work. If you say it's educational, then stuff that Rabbi Danzig said should be taken. And seriously. Uh, so let's take a break. Five minute break. We always take a break at 10 o'clock. Five minutes. If look at, um, oh, thank you. So if you look at uh, Pre Revia, now we're still in Alpha, obviously. Uh, but if you look at uh, what they'd superimposed to be safe bet, when Mitzvah Gadola, he had mode, she ain't both from the state for Torah, El Kade will mode Torah, but he saw Isha, many discussions in the commentaries. What Isha, and we'll see this when we do the Shulchan Aruch, but the, basically it's the question of it's, if it's Isha Bat Banim, she can have children. And then there will be many questions about, does he already have children? Is he already Yosef? Do you still sell the Sefer Torah? Selling a Sefer Torah is considered here to be, to be what? On the top of it. Selling the last the resort. It's like the last resort. Like uh, basically, the... it says here, it's a misugadala, and and she, that you're not, you don't sell separate Torah unless it's either to study Torah or to or to get married. And then I added added that it's a woman that can't, can't have children because that's that's that will be part of the discussion of the of the later post game. But I don't want to get into that per se. So what is the safer Torah? Just as a side point, I find it fascinating that you have to sell a Sefer Torah to learn Torah. Because by the logic, what exactly is Torah? Clearly, it's not Sefer Torah because you're not learning from it, right? So, so what, what is it? Because this is the only smicha program that doesn't cost money. But the rest, <laughs> the rest of them, you'd have to pay money, okay? So here, you don't have to sell your Sefer Torah to learn Torah. But in general, that means that, you know, you pay for your tuition, you pay for whatever, besides tuition, you pay for it. And you know you pay you pay to have it. To say for Torah here, go back to the thing I hack you with is the other woman. And but the but but Lisa Isha is still more important. Now the the conversation just to have it here is whether or not is all women. What about a person? He's uh, again talking about a man. He's fifty. He already has six, seven kids, or two kids, or one kid maybe. But he has you know that. Does it? Does that include? It's considered like a tragic thing to do, also, to sell your sacred Torah. But isn't this? Is is there not an Indian here that the other deal writer that there's shark sort of or not? Do you sell? If you if you sell a Torah, then you're it's it's potentially because you're chayev when you get married to provide shark sort or not. Not so much the Ona, but certainly the Shah sh and the Sud. Well, it's explicitly the Oraita. That whole conversation will come. I am sorry for yeah. pushing aside for a moment. I think it's going to come up. But I just wanted to make that point here. And then we have Gimel and this whole thing of Misal Dam Shisai Shakashu Ben Yichet. 
אבל מתאים לישא כשהוא בן ידימו, מצווה מן המובחר, תן רבן המעשי בנות ולצד סמוך לפיר כאן, פיוברטי, סמוך מייז ללטל אפטר, מי מין ללטל בפור, יר סינס בין אוסו ללטל בפור, עליו הכתוב אומר וידעתי שאומו הלכה, ואומר אביי אהוד עדיפי מחברי משום דנינסטי, ריזו אי מבטר תלמוד חכם, because I got married when I got married when I was 16, which seems to also indicate people were getting married not at 13 and not at 16, but later than that, probably at 18, at least. Vinis bar arba isar hava amina gira beine the student, I could have just told something to go to hell because I would have been married if I had a little kodum yagimel lo yasiyam da havi kizinut. What's the rub in the halacha, by the way, in terms of uh, saying uh, these different uh, these different ages? What's the just at a halacha point of view? What's the rub? That before thirteen, you're not chayav mitzvot anyway. So why would that even be a right, question? Right, but once you're thirteen, you're chayav mitzvot. Right? I mean, the the rub in terms of the thirteen. So why eighteen? Because um, okay, like where it's the source? Yeah, right. But why sure. that's the source, but why 18? It's a good age. I well, think. if you say pick up at 18, you start learning Gomorrah, right? But, okay, but but that's not the I think the real reason there. Um because 13 is really too young. Really too young, yeah. yeah. Like not mature enough. Yeah. Yeah. And under 13, it's uh, Zanut. It's just uh, off. In the 18, early 1800s, in some of the yeshivas in Europe, the large of the yeshivas, the best guys are getting married at 14, 15. I learned the sugya when I originally learned the sugya when I was 12. I can't imagine why I was learning the sugya when I was 12. I, I'm learning from my bar mitzvah. I'm having all sorts of nightmares about my bar mitzvah because uh, very poor voice and very poor other things and memories and all that sort of stuff. And uh, in our shul, the, the, uh, uh, the sisterhood, it's a matter of that shul sisterhood, they announce everything, you got such and such from the men's club and the sisterhood would give the, for the bat missus, which were always on Friday night, would give a pair of uh, candlesticks uh, to the bat mitzvah and the bar mitzvahs, and this is baby boomer, boomer so this is every Shabbos. The boys would get a kiddush cup. I had a nightmare that uh, Mrs. Gazuntai, that was her name, the president of the sisterhood, got up with the kiddush cup and says, and now, Danny, we're happy to present you with this kiddush cup and your new wife. And it was one of the sisterhood ladies. It, it was it was a nightmare. What can I tell you? It was hard to explain to my parents. Um, but here he has his 13. Let's take a look at the base Yosef. Um the Habi Kazu Mashana Balkodam you give him a low low you saw the Habi Kazuna. So Gershon, could you read it read to us? Wait, sorry, can you give him a moment to find it? Say again where uh, about is the lad and uh, well, I don't know how to say it, but everybody has different things. Umash um, uh, Omar Katab about Kodem Yagimel Lo Yisa the Havi Kizinut, and that's the base Yosef. So I actually called him Gershon. Gershon, do you have it? Right, no, I just wanted to make sure I could find it before he said it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Gershon, do you have it? And you have to make sure, Gershon, that you're not, uh, you're not uh, locked up there. Got to hear your voice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay go. About Kodem, Leishat the Habe Kazanut. No, 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 no. Well, no, no. maybe it's not the. 
קודם י"ג לאישה דחבי כזנות, כן כתוב הרמב״ם בסוף הלכות איסורי ביאה בפרק כ"א, כ"א, הלכות כ"ה, תעמוד דאמרן בריש פרק חרש דקטן לא תקינו לרבנן נישואין, בסוף פרק האישה רבה, אמרינן דאישה קטן פטורה מן המציאה, סורי, מן החליצה ומן הייבום, ומה שמעלה, זה לשונות, כיוון דלא תקינו לנישואי הווה בעלייתו בעילת זנות, לפי דבריו הוא תתנו רבנה ביבמות דף ס"ב המשיא בניו סמוך לפרקן וכולי. והיינו בין י"ג ושלמות, אבל התוספות...
before uh, puberty uh, here is 13. And, and therefore, Samach would mean what? Close to, which would mean before. So, how, saying, so now, thanks for the correction. We're going to, uh, thank you all for the correction. That's, you know, that's correct. Now you might, I think he's saying like this. Close to, close to, even though the rabbis didn't say there was no, they didn't have this in Kotan. Mikona Kong Omari Tuspas, Deleka Isura. There's no Isur to do it. You have no authorization. You have, they did Lotakinu, they didn't make it for them. Deleka Shiva Biatsanut. And I lost her, therefore, it's not a Biatsanut. U mitzvah nami, you know, it is a mitzvah. Lahasti isha livno katan. Isha livno katan. You make sure your, your young boy has a, has a wife. Quote Gomorrah and Sanhedrin. The love of Kosovo Arabia, that's a key shalom alecha. Everything is going to be peaceful. The chen katu, the perak of Bal Yavemto. The pore, the perak, and he's roughing. The chen dat, rashi, the perak. And he's roughing a hot damasi, isha livno katan. A lava katuvo mer, lamans, both arba. Just a passage saying everything's going to be dandy. Metive ha madrich, banov, lotab, the derk yishara. That's later on the gmar. Vamasion somoch, we had that in the gmar. Vamasion somoch of Pirkan, and marry them off close to that perk. A lava katuvo mer, the adata ki shalom alacha. Somoch of Pirkan shani. Perish Rashi, some of the Pirkun are dying Katanim. They're still a Katanim. But they'll say some of the Pirkun Shani, but no, some of the Pirkun is different. He's not really a cotton. The love Hainu cotton Kulia, he's not such a cotton. The Mishum Shana or Hasi Shana, low to Zane a love. So how do you, how, what are they ending up with? May, uh, making it, uh, making it, what's, what's the, uh, there's no authorization that normally should tell us that it's uh, Zanut. Well, I think it's like this. We can, can I, can I get a little bit of a way I understand it? Let, let, let me offer an idea that, that the Rambam sounds like he's saying it's Zanut and therefore it's forbidden. And the first thing the Beis Yosef says, he says, no, the only reason he says it's znut is because, it's not really znut, it's just znut because the rabbis didn't, didn't permit it. But, but it's not necessarily znut. It's not an isnut. The znut is not the reason. The znut is just a halachic definition because the rabbis didn't permit it. But actually, he then goes on to say, Right, and it's not it is, because, why is it not? But then it actually is permitted why if it's it close it? enough. Why is it not? What? Why is it not Sanut? Because they really don't object to it. Because he, uh, he argues on that point. He, they really don't say it's forbidden. They just, uh, they actually do allow it. That's what it says. Especially if it's close. And at the end, he says, especially if it's close to 13. Because he quotes Tosus, I mean, who argues and say the rabbis do permit it. No? Right. Right, right. In other words, they, when it so, says when it says they didn't take new it, it doesn't mean that they forbid it. It just means that you don't have to do it. Like but there's no one is there's no actual isser in doing it. So therefore, it's not new because it is permitted. Right. The the pre so the pre says it's kiznut and not znut. Let's hear some. Let's hear some more people. Go ahead. So I understood it a bit differently, right? We, we said earlier that every every uh, bia that doesn't have a, a potential to like create a child is bilat snoot, right? So the reason why Rabbana wanted metaken is because before 13, so before Pirkan, you're not able to create a child, right? So technically your bia is bilat snoot. And I think- Where do you see that? Where do you see Where do you see that in the video? But I think that's what the bachelor's have saying at the end, the Mishum Shana or Chasi Shana, Lot Tazmi So you never know, like maybe like half a year before and they'll be able to have a child. It's not, it's not such a big deal. 
All right, but he never said this idea that uh, having children is what causes it to well, he says you know, it not be not not I think I mean I he think did. No, he says it earlier. It's, uh, sorry, it's not the it's not the bad Yosef, the Bayit Chadash says it. Kobi Hashem I know Rabbi Latzuk, right? So it seems to be like a pretty established principle that every Bia doesn't have a potential to create a child is Bia Latzuk. So the way I understood Bayit Yosef here is that since before yeah. 13 you can have a child, therefore... Would you, I, would you say that about an old before. couple too? Uh, old couple is different, right? Because they can't. No, but, uh, but we're going off. No, no, I, I, I got that. I, I brought that more, but but I think we're going off. What's the so? Let's try it this way. This is very helpful. What both of you said. What's the fear here? Or what's the concern? I was concern, fear. There's always a, a fear and concern of getting the halacha done right. There seems evidently a reason for doing 18. And I think most people could figure out why 18 seems to, it seems to make sense. And we'll see other post game when we get to Shechan Arach that we'll talk, talk about that. But, but we have 13. 13 itself creates a crisis or Samoth, Samoth of Pirkan, which is about 13. You know, in other words, right? What's the crisis? The crisis is... <laughs> Crisis is the soul sexuality. I mean, sexuality itself is is the crisis. What are you doing having a thirteen? It's very important to note here that it's that it's not the child doing it; it's the father, it's the parent doing it. The parent does it. Problem of sexuality is anarchy. The child's not allowed to do this on his own or potentially on her own, but certainly on his own, is not allowed is not allowed to do it. The father is allowed to do it. And what are they rewarded with that the father does it? Shalom Ahalecha. There'll be peace in your be peace in your tent. So the whole thing is very scary. We have enough material to say to us that 18 makes a lot of sense, but then we're scared because we know what happens at 16, 17, and 18. Therefore, the best way of doing it is not a suggestion that the child find his, uh, his buddy and the two good friends uh, hitch up and get married. In fact, the rabbis didn't allow anything from before. But the, given the fact that sexuality leads to chaos, a good parent who's Masi Banav, Bano, who marries off his son to Isha, creates shalom in the tent. And that's what takes care of that. And that's a mitzvah min mufkar. I think mitzvah min mufkar means something like choice mitzvah, but more than that, it means. Uh, Prime, <laughs> think about Emza, a prime mitzvah. This is how you can know that this is going to, to, uh, to work right. This is so far away, you know, from, you know, I gave you my dream about getting married, uh, you know, on my bar mitzvah, but, but, but that's the logic of it. It's only a parent that's allowed to do it. The purpose is to bring shalom in the Allah. Here I can put in Reuben, what Reuben said, and maybe that has to do with when it goes puberty, you can start the children machine going, and therefore they'll be busy taking care of uh, taking care of children. And uh, they will, you know, and that's what they'll be doing as opposed to uh, worrying at a later age about getting married. Comments? I'm just trying to understand it. I mean, there might be another reason why Chachamim were attacking to uh, get married before 13. I, it's, it might be far fetched, and it's just a theory. Like, it, it could be total, I could be totally off. Is that before 13, you're not Nikra Adam? So, like, the Lota Adam El Levada doesn't really apply to you. No way. So like, there's two there's two structural principles here in order for you to get married, right? You have to be able to have kids and also Nikra Adam. You have to like it's a lot of 
Adam Vio Levado, right? That's the first one. And second, you're gonna be you're gonna have you you have to be able to have kids. So before 13, right, you don't have any of those two elements, so therefore you have no kids to be married whatsoever. Okay. Let's try fine. Let's turn to the Shachan Arch and see how, how it's handled there. So let's go to Shachan Arch. Okay. Um, so it's Aleph. What are we looking at? We're looking at Aleph. Um, okay. Bet is the same as we had before. A muff from Sefer Torah. Um, Gimel, Mitzvah, I'll call Adam, she saw Yisha, then Yuchet. Vamatim, we saw then Yu Gimel, Mitzvah, Mina Muthar. I've called him Yagimel Lo Yisah, the Havi Kizanut. Interesting, it says Kizanut. It's not literally Zanut, but Havi Kizanut. The Shum Indian Lo Yaver Mechav Shana, but nonetheless can go further than 20 years below Isha. Misha, Avril of Chav Shana, Vena Rosel Yisah, Baking Kofi Motel Yisah, Kedei Lakaye Misra Puruvia. You can get up to 20. If not, they come after you, maybe even with the rods. Does Umihu imose patara, the Tarud ba, the Mikyare Lisaisha Kadeshalo Yitrach with Mazano, the Batel, but he's afraid of getting married because he's really learning and he's going to have to go out and support the family. Muter Lahita Her. Okay, now let's look at the Ramaz Hagar. Okay. Uh, Josh, want to read this? Sure. <laughs> ואפילו בנסה אישה ושהי מעשרה שנים לא נהגו לחוף אותו לגרשה, אף על פי שלא קיים פיריה וריביה, וכן בשאר ענייני זיווגים, ובלבד שלא תהיה אסורה עליו. אני אוהב את המתודולוגיה. מה זה? 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 Like, he, like it doesn't he work. Hasn't see, he hasn't yeah. seen anyone do this. He hasn't. So it must be that uh, the, uh -huh. that we don't follow his law. Or, or the Batadin don't have the power to do it. But he doesn't seem to be criticizing the Batadin. Yeah. So, you, so what do we have here? So what do we have? Go ahead. I'm uh, just agreeing that this is like a wild haga that he just says, like all these laws that we just said are legally binding. We don't do it anymore. Right. I'm wondering if it's a reflection of general society at the time. Like earlier when the Torah wrote, it was more common in many other societies for the, for, for the I guess, the hakpada uh, on this. And by the time Ramah was writing, it's saying, yeah, that's, that's not really done anymore. And that's, you know, the times have changed around us and we're, it's sort of a, a more general societal reflection. Yeah, but I also think that he's talking about the, the prerogatives of, of Beitin. In other words, I don't think he's uprooting the idea entirely. He's just saying the Beitin's business is not to get into the bedroom nowadays. We don't, we as the Beitin don't go this When are these this, nowadays when he's speaking? In, in his days, nowadays, in his, in a, in, you know, in his yeah, days. Okay, right. So, okay. Already right. back then, they were aware that the Beitin should. 16th century Krakow. Yeah, that, 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 that you shouldn't get involved with these things. But he's not saying that the laws aren't aren't true and, and shouldn't be followed. He's just saying we're not knowing to We don't, we are not going to enforce these laws in a strict way. We're not going to put somebody in harem if you didn't do this. It, do, it doesn't work. So there's two ways you say it doesn't work. It doesn't work, you said in a nice way, Asher. 
general society, okay, so there's more autonomy then, could very well be. Krakow was a, was a pretty independent kind of uh, independent kind of place. The notion of Yud Gimel being close to the Zunut, it seems that that argument comes back, that they, you know, that it's not done because people are not gonna marry off their uh, 13 year old. As, as uh, Yavni said that they don't give an argument because as Rabbi Danzig said, because there is no argument right now for this. There is no argument. They just say, we've discontinued it. But there's another part of that, let me say it better. The other part of that is, this is the break on extremism. Here in extremism, I not just say, you can definitely say this is a, there's something strange because something strange is going on. If the rabbis didn't institute, didn't institute um, marriage for these children, it's obviously because it's kids in youth. I mean, they were right not to establish marriage. But then you can take the halachic frame and say, let me argue on the basis of the halachic frame <coughs> that it's a mitzvah. And there, and there, and just as every child begins, I'm still talking about men here, begins his observance of mitzvahs at 13. Actually, they begin their observance of mitzvahs when they're younger than 13, because that's the way, because that's the way it works. You start doing it, you start putting it to fill earlier, you start doing the mitzvahs earlier. So here too, that's an extreme position. So, whoever said they like it because this is what the people speaking, evidently there's wisdom within the people. But a greater wisdom here is the wisdom of, um, is, the, uh, is the wisdom of this posek saying, we're just gonna drop it or it's been dropped. And without getting upset and saying, let's bring it, let's bring it back. The, the Mahabar so actually the started that danger, process. The one danger is, is that if you don't find the real argument, as Yavi points out, it's not a real argument. It's just saying we're not doing it. So that seems in a certain ways, it's very elegant, right? We're just not doing it. But the problem is, is that it can always come back. One of the things that you find in some of the cults that you, uh, that uh, Jewish cults that you have right now is you're having child marriage from cults. Excuse me, I didn't say the word from, but anyway, from cults, you're having child marriage. And based on what? Based on the halacha. There are some based communities the, that have been doing that for a while. Torah. The Yemenite community has been doing that for a while. Who has? The, the Yemenites. I know my, my, my brother-in-law who's Yemenite his yeah. parents came in Samim in 1952. They were married at, he was 14, she was 12. Yeah, you know, you have that with <laughs> Rabbi Kafach and Rebetzin Kafach, who were two great tzaddikim. They had a certain situation in Yemen. It's kind of interesting. They had a situation, and it refers, Rabbi Kafach became the greatest god all of the, of the Yemenites. I, I learned with him a little bit. A great man, great tzaddik. She was a great tzaddikist and did tremendous acts of uh, chesed. And they got married that same age too. Why? Because they were both orphans. And the law in Yemen was that once you hit 12 and a half, if you were an orphan, the government can take you and marry you off to a mazel. So they got married, actually it was a 12 and a half. They got married at 12 and a half, but they got married. Lived a very fruitful wow. life. You know, he got Pras Yisrael. He wrote great him, was a great tzaddik. She, she created a lot of uh, that. So, you know, exists. but in general, I'm not, I'm not, in, not in favor, not in favor of it. So you have an elegant response here, but then you have these groups. They are now marrying off their kids at 14 and 13. And that's what's taking place. 
because the argument never was uh, completed. Now the argument somehow could have been, I think, on this dilute factor. That could potentially have been a very compelling argument. They don't really have dots at this age. They can't really handle it. I think one can make a pretty obvious argument for it. And then you have Zanut and then make the argument that it's not how often, as opposed to that we've uh, dropped it, even though it was elegant at its, at its time. I, like I the, think even the, what the elegance got, Sarah? of- Sarah, Sarah's been trying sorry. to- Yeah, yeah right. Sarah, what do you got? Um, Thank you. Yeah, well, I was just the the beach well is really interesting because it seems like he tries to kind of fill in some of this. So first of right. all, he brings you the Mordechai, right? So that that already so tells you, you that. Show us, show us, where is it? Right. So the so this is Wisman has an agusha lolicho. I ain be Mordechai, be Mordechai ubago da katbu be chut la aretz ain kofi. So that already <laughs> seems like th this sort of like oh well chut la aretz we don't do it is another way of saying like we we ourselves are not going to be in this business. But that already is a couple centuries early. That's a little bit earlier, right? That the Mordecai is like, I looked up his dates, 1250 mm -hmm. to 1298. Um, so that's already earlier. But then what the the Beit Shmuel says on his own is also really interesting. Gam din hu shei gizaralat meinu shaloni saisha ela im goes rim gazei rasha im she al hatzibor ela im kein rov rov tzibor yecholim la modbo. And I couldn't tell whether that was like a way of just saying, okay, well, this is kind of what the general culture is. Um, but it seems like the language of like, it's it's a Zerash and Ropatsibor Yokolima Modbo is opens the door for this to be like it for the if the social conditions change and actually now they could do it, then it would be better actually if we could go back to being poor. So I couldn't quite tell whether he was like filling it in in a way that was congenial to the Rema or a way that was like not so congenial. Uh, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, hearing it and hearing you read it, I would say, you know, in terms of how it impacts on me, it's a, you take the elegant argument of we just don't do it. We connect it to a halacha principle and goes ring zero. We connect it to that. And it's, uh, even though it, it potentially could be opened again, and we have individual cases. We have the cases from Yemen that maybe, you know, that needs to be, there needs to be an out for that, for, for, for those kind of situations so that we still have it. I think it kind of works. And I would also, again, I'm sorry, I also push for the, the Zanut uh, argument because we could say Bismaneinu, it's a, clearly an act of, act of uh, Zanut. But, but this so what we see here, this... what we see, and therefore I've changed what I said. Today is an act of Zanut. And maybe there's really thing that that if there's a valid halachic way of doing things, even if we don't like it anymore, they don't destroy the foundation of it. They're saying is we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And yes, but, I'm sorry, but... sir, I'm just trying to react. But no. we may very well do it in a different stage where it, where when when you know the life expectancies are going to change once again in a few years here that we may Wait, be doing just, it. Is the Rama okay? I, maybe I just misunderstood because I thought that the Rama when he's saying that we like we're we're not nohig to be kofin on this anymore. The Beit Din like doesn't intervene anymore. That's about someone yeah. who is marrying right. It's um, this is right. The yeah, other side. Of the side. Of the we're giving up the whole business of of, of uh, Zivugin. No, right. But yeah. He expands it to the whole chapter. I think. But it's but right. it's not right. talking Every about day. the but it's not really talking about the question of uh, the thirteen year old anymore, because that right. like, there's no one who would be kofin on the thirteen year old to get married. It's the question of the either the twenty year old, the the older than twenty year old, or or the question about like if you're marrying someone who who right. 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 We're out of the whole issue. Yeah. But no, just saying here, we're out of the whole business. We're out of the twenty-year-old business. We're out of the. We're out of the whole business. In a way, it sounds but like. But we. But we Stay is again. the is the is the Beit Din is not the parents, for example. Talking about specifically whether the Beit Din is. Ah ah ah. Let's see again. That's the issue for. Local thing. That's the issue for no, not, not forcing father, a divorce if they've been married for 10 years. Still, and what you're saying, Abby, is, is that a father could still do it. 
Is that I mean, what according to the Ram, I, I mean, I don't think we had the father. The father didn't have that role for these things. But but when you're but the but like I think we have two separate issues. The issue of the marrying the kids off at th at thirteen or younger, which is what we were talking about previously and like how that has evolved over time. And that's what I think you were interested in. And the Ramah is talking about an evolution over time in society, but I don't think he's talking about the question of marriage at the young age of 13. He's talking about right. the question the, of- It's the Haggah. Yeah, the Haggah. The Haggah. The Haggah is talking about the post 20. It's talking about the end of the-, the Right. Like, because, yeah. like, because I, I was he's commenting on the when the Beit Yosef said, or when the when the Mechaber says, um, yeah, Kofi, and the Mechaber says you're said the Beit is Kofi, um, when he hasn't married, uh, um, by Esrim Shana, right? Uh, and I would disagree. I would say that the Rama does include the thirteen year old. Like at the end of the Rama, it said the Bilvat Shalotiyah He's basically saying, like, do whatever you want. We're not forcing you to do anything. But so no long one was no. But I don't think anyone was, I think Yavni is right, right? Like, no one was ever kofin on a 13-year-old. No, no. That like, was only, coffee, like, mitzvah mina mukhar to start with. No, they were kofin not, like, they were forcing people not to have their 13-year-old getting married. Like, before before 13, they were telling them, don't get them married. Well, well that's... Now, the that's... saying that even before 13, you could get them married so long as she's kosher to you. That's what no, you're, Ruben, what you're saying actually was the chiddush of the of the mechaber, because the Torah actually was allowing for pre thirteen, and the mechaber was saying, uh, uh, "Where is it? Where is it?" So it's already sort of starting the process of, of this of this response that the that the Ramah continued. Um, like historically speaking, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I hear all you very strongly. I'm ready to you know. Good. I'm. I am a changed man. However, at the end, at the end of the um, end of the Haggah, he says, Right, but that's so so I will make a distinction here between self-action, just a term, right? What a person does on their own, and the and the masa baiting. There could very well still be the potential of a father taking taking a taking a son at twelve and three quarters to uh, to get married, potentially according to this, because self action. So therefore, going back, the whole wide range of zivuk has been enormously. The power of the Beitin has has left. It hasn't uh, eliminated every possibility for uh, for nuance for nuances on the rest, and I think that's I think that's I think that's correct. But of course, once you have the fact that the baking is not going to be be doing all sorts of uh, strange things, the act of uh, of a thirteen year old getting married. That possibility is decreased, although it's still halakhically permissible, and hence you have the Yemenite families, right? As we, the families who get married, who have gotten married, because there's no other way of, uh, no other way of acting, and I think uh, that you have here a lot of good things. You have you have here post scheme that allow for that situation to change. You have here the fact of when you need to have certain specific occasions, which are self-action, private actions within a within a family, these things are these things are possible. Um, by the way, m the courts I'm familiar with here in, in Israel have come down. The courts, I mean the the Bate, Bate Din, have come out strongly against child marriage. There's actually Takanas, Takanot, excuse me against child marriage. It used to be when, when the state was started, it was like 14, <laughs> can't marry under the age of 14 and moved to 15, now it's at 16. I think it's actually at 17 right now. And that's actually a talk of the Bay team and the Bay team. And so where is it? So, um, so I think this is a case in which it works. You know, there's a lot of different factors uh, happening here, but I think that actually, 
this is a this is a this is a good case. And also, there's a lot of there's a lot of humility here. So, the argument against the Bate Din saying seventeen, part of the argument by these other groups is, we don't do. You're not supposed to be involved in Zivu game anymore. And the Bate Din in some is but baked in with Rev Herzog, Rev Frank, a couple of very important people. They said they uh, Rev Benuzia. They said, yeah, yeah, we're not generally interested in this, but you you can't reestablish extreme behavior. It's almost almost the language that was used. You can't reestablish extreme behavior. Um, okay, I spoke too long. Uh, comments on this. So I was reading a text last week, and basically it was kind of an analysis of like sexual behaviors in like uh, European communities until like the 20th century. And what I'm saying is that until the 18th centuries, uh, it was very well accepted in Ashkenazi community to have child marriage. But in Sephardic community, they were post like according to the Rambam, and usually when someone was trying to get the kids married young at age 13 or 14 or younger than that, the, the base then would step in and prohibit it. So I think you, if you- oh, in Iraq. If you read that into the Rama and the, the Shulchan Aruch, it could be like, it'd be pretty interesting. Because like, according to the Rama, you could pretty much whatever you want, like the Betin is not going to tell you anything, they don't get involved. But the Shulchan Aruch said that before 13, it's like, uh, it's Kimoznut, and then you can't do it, like the Betin will tell you not to. Okay. All right. No, no, this was a very big difference between, uh, we're going to see this next time is when we're going to talk about Chemdur Rabbeinu Gershon. You know, how far did Chemdur Rabbeinu Gershon spread? And, you know, what's the process of making new takanot? And when does it, you know, how does that work? And that's actually going to, I think, is actually a pretty fascinating, a pretty fascinating, um, pretty fascinating conversation. I wanted to bring you to one last thing here. Um, and um, if you turn back to the tour, um, and uh, uh, and this is prior to the prior to Chandra uh, Rabinu Genshin. If you look at Yud in the tour, or prior to the discussion of Chandra Rabinu Genshin, is a makom sheish takana shelo yisa isha. Excuse me, shelo yisa ela isha achat. And that's the other aspect is that minhag becomes part of the uh, becomes part of the way of our of our definition. Oh, welcome, Lexi. How are you? Good to see you. Okay. And look at the um, uh, look. You have the darche Moshe. We we'll spend a little time on darche Moshe before we. Before we give up, um, yeah, do you see the Darche Moshe? Do, which one? The Darche Moshe Aruch is the better one. I'm not sure I have the Aruch one in my volume, but I might. Uh, you might? I can pull it up um, online if not. Well, um, as you're pulling up online, um, or, yeah, and okay. this one might, yeah. It just says Darche Moshe. I don't know if it's the other one. No, I want to Darche Moshe. You, you look at the Darche Moshe and then you'll get extra words. Lexi, do you have Darche Moshe Aruch? You do? Okay. Halching Achar Minhag. You see that? You're muted, Lexi. Okay, so go read. We can't okay, hear so, you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, or Tet, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, the Derche Moshe. I'm on a website right now and it doesn't show Derche Moshe on Tet. What does it start with? Hoching Achar and Minhag. I only have that in the Torah in this text. I'm on Al Hatora. Um, um, okay, so therefore I should, uh, let's see if I can find something like this. 
Um, um, if you have the Shura Devora edition, it's between the two and the Shofar and Rokh. Like it's just in between. I them. don't have that in front of me right now. I just have the. I'm I'll sorry. Have okay. So Ruben, I put a link. Have There's it. the, have the Hebrew have books it. has the uh, the. You have it or don't have it, Ruben? Oh, I have it. Yeah. Okay. Read. Read. Okay, <laughs> יוצא ואיתן כתובה, על כאן השונות. ובהגרת מרדכי לכתובות, זה טעם דה רבנו גרשון, משום כתעתה בעלמה, ולא משום דרע רע דה אסורה דה רע איתה, על כאן השונות. This is very important sentence. First of all, what's דרע רע? דרע רע means a loss. Like דרע רע דה ממונה. The eventual loss of money. Here's דרע רע דה איסור, it means an eventual loss of an איסור, meaning you'll do something אסור. It means that you will... fall into an Easter. So therefore, the reason Rabbeinu Gershom of, uh, against uh, polygamy is Mishum Ketata. Translate Ketata. Strife. Strife. Just the Alma. Uh, alone. Below Mishum Deror. It's not because there's any Easter, per se. What does this, um, what does this phrase do? The, the other mean, explanations, I, I said- It adds like flexibility around the whole thing. But here we're in it, so we're doing it. What? Like it just, it just adds a lot of leeway um, when it comes to like how you treat, when it comes to how you treat the Tekana. If you say it isn't actually a Tekana that's really built around Isorium, it's built more around like practical considerations. That leaves you more wiggle room if you say, well, in this scenario, like these practical considerations outweigh these ones, right? If you say it's because of an issue. And, and, and that, that is true. And that's exactly what's gonna happen. And then the, 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 the challenge will be to find which ones, which practical considerations, like maybe Yibu, for example, will be an exception. And therefore you end up having two wives But what's the danger? The danger is if you have too many exceptions, you lose the hair. And so, so it's, you know, that's, but that's a consequence. In other words, I think there's something more, so that's true. So I'm accepting that, but there's something even more essential here. Going back to my uh, original conversations and I'm happy to be able to end with something I said at the beginning. My question also is like, what things are added? So Chendra Ben Ogeshem, which itself is an addition, here is based not on a worry regarding an Esor. We're going to make sure there's only one wife because we're afraid of a certain Esor, et cetera. No. Now, the fact that it's not about Esor is correct according to Lexi, which means you can have more wiggle room, but too much wiggle room, you won't have a harem. But what's the reason? Ketata. That's an... That didn't exist in the Gomorrah, I don't think. I didn't see it there in the Gomorrah. I mean, you can darshan it out, Shalom Ba'alecha or something like that, but it's not really there of that katata. In other words, in terms, polygamy is disastrous in terms of strife. We have this for reasons for other things. That's Rabbeinu Gershon's, Rabbeinu Gershon's, what do you got? We we had it. It didn't have katata for uh, for other things in the Gemara for sp for specifically whether like if you don't want to marry a young uh, a woman who is bat banim because you're worried about katata with your other kids, then that's a good that's yeah, a justifiable right, reason right? to marry a woman who's so, bat banim. So my great chiddush. So let me let me say back. First of all, it says that in the Gemara katata. I believe so. Okay. 
well, I was, I'm wrong if that's the case, but I, I'm still going to fight back. So I'll say it like in Katata, you really shouldn't fight about Katata. So I, I really shouldn't. But I'd say it's an amazing use of expansion of Katata that you have Cher and Rabbi Geshe based on one thing in terms of strife. What does that mean? You create Haramim in order to have <laughs> domestic tranquility. And I not just to have a localized, perhaps this strife, but you, have, you know, to have made, and, and, and it's a major deal. So we'll deal with next time, which is in a while. Um, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to go further in. First of all, please get the Darche Moshe Ha'aruch. How can we do that? Someone send that to I you think find it's it? on the Hebrew books version. Of okay, the... great. Please look through. It's a long thing. Look through it and see how the, I think my question is, is how is the Chandra of Beno Gershom composed? One part is, yeah, there's more wiggle room. How much wiggle room? And the other part that I mentioned is expansion. Thank you for the correction, everyone. Expansion. Thank you, Abney. Expansion of the notion of Ketata. And by doing so, doing a harem like that, you create at least a legal disruption when you get rid of the second potential second wife. You then there's all sorts of other disruption take place because one of the way of taking care is to make sure you know making it make sure that you know the guy wants children he doesn't have to divorce the the first wife he can have another wife they can you know still remain but they so how does that disruption uh, how's that taken care of and I think that's what we'll do next time and uh, nothing will play a greater role thank God. And I'll, I'll see what else I can do. Well, actually, how did it go in the other share today? It was all right? It's good. Yeah. Both good. of the other ones were good. All of them. Okay, great. All right, good seeing you all. Um, if there, yeah, um, I, please look at this, the Dache Moshe Aruch. Please look at the Shulchan Aruch. Wish you all really a Chag Sameach, the bench to your should be a blessed uh, year and uh, we should figure out ways in which uh, the halacha could be darche noam and uh, with rigor okay shalom shalom take care quick question will you